Good morning. Thank you for having me. My name is Tim Kim, and I'm the owner of Flynn Acquisitions. We are a tool company. We make tools. So here's where our story begins. If you have one of these, then you have a lot of these. And if you have a lot of these, then you know that the world is full of these, and they're never, ever the same size. They're like snowflakes, right? So if you're like me, and you have to deal with one of these, this is what you do. You grab a handful of sockets, and you go like this. Uh, too big, too small, too big, too small, until you find the right size. And that is on a good day. On a bad day, you can't find that size. You've got to stop what you're doing, go to the store, and get a replacement. The point is, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. Is this a problem? Yes, it is. Here's my solution. Two adjustable sockets that fit 19 different sizes. That means no more guessing sizes, no more buying replacements, no more stopping what you're doing. We save the end user time, money, and hassle. It's a very simple proposition, yes? Now, my business model works in three phases. Phase one, I will manufacture locally and I will sell online. I will sell the product as a Trusty Max adjustable socket. We will market to the consumer via internet and cable TV. And the whole point really for phase one is to generate this consumer buzz. Why? Because we want to, to get some uh, negotiation leverage for phase two. Because for, in phase two, we will license the product to a major tool brand like Snap-on, like Stanley, like Craftsman. We want to make sure that these guys don't walk away with something they're not supposed to walk away with, so we need that leverage. So just to recap, in phase one, I'm a re uh, manufacturer and a retailer. In phase two, I stop all that. I just become a licensor, and I collect the licensing royalty. And the licensee will assume all the manufacturing, the distribution, and the marketing. And they will actually rebrand the product as, in this case, the snap-on adjustable socket. In phase three, I will refine operations and essentially just prepare for acquisition. Now, a normal socket only fits one size. That's why you need so many of them in your set. Also, the way they work is they grip the corners of the nut. They need those corners. But in real life, those, those corners don't always stay sharp. They get rusted, they get rounded, they get damaged, right? So what happens to a normal socket? It stops working. It becomes ineffective. Now, our socket, first of all, it's adjustable. Thanks to the oddball shape and the knob on top, we can accommodate many different sizes. Also, please note that we do not, grab, we do not grip the corners of the nut. We grip the sides. You know what that means? That means no matter how rusty, no matter how rounded, no matter how damaged uh, another bolt is, we're gripping it and we can take it out. And this product is patented. It's not patent pending, it's patented. Now please remember that the goal for phase one is to generate strong consumer buzz. That being said, we're going to leverage our connections with NASCAR to get some nice endorsements. And we're going to take these endorsements and put them in front of the consumer via the cable TV and internet. Ah, my competition. All right. So, if you see all these major brands in the, in the green box right here, they're pretty big names. And I'm happy to say that none of them offers an adjustable socket wrench. Some of them offer an adjustable something or other, but it is not an adjustable socket wrench. That being said, I lovingly call them potential partners for phase two. <laughs> now, <clears throat> now, on the other side of the screen, boo, that's my direct competition. Crescent sells an adjustable ratchet wrench, and that tool actually, unfortunately, that's a market failure. It's getting very negative consumer feedback the way it was designed. It doesn't grip very tightly, so when you use it, it actually slips and it, and it strips the, the nut or bolt in question. So the irony of it is, all the nuts and bolts that that thing damages, my tool can grip and take out. <laughs> now, this Endeavor tool, that is the gator grip. You may have seen it on TV. They do have first mover advantage, and to be honest, it's a decent tool. It's not that bad. However, it is only good for lightweight applications. Once you stick that thing on the end of a drill, or you put it in high torque applications, it breaks. My product is much more durable. So durable, in fact, that we can offer a lifetime warranty. That's something these guys cannot do. That would, that would crush them. We are a small operation, and as such, I'm currently the only person in-house. I'm the CEO. <laughs> I'm the CEO. In, in 2003, I started a music company. I exited in 2005, and it's doing quite well today. Kenny Ahn is on my board of advisors. He brings a wealth of connections and experience from the Home Depot side of the industry. Toshiro Nakayama is also my advisor. He owns a small tool company in Southern California, and he has direct experience licensing his patents to craftsmen. Gil Murphy is also one of my advisors. He's a serial entrepreneur, and he brings connections to NASCAR and SEMA. Now, with regard to my financial projections, I have three points that I'd like to make. In year one, and only in year one, am I a manufacturer? And that's why you see such a high cost of goods sold. But that, the saving grace is that stops in years two and three as my cost of goods goes down because I stopped manufacturing. Now, in year three, we see a revenue of $1.4 million, and we do that by licensing about 1 million units. Now, for some perspective, craftsmen alone, just by themselves, they make over 1 million sockets every day. 
They make it every day. That translates into about 7.5 million socket sets a year just from craftsmen alone, not their competitors. So with, from, that, from that perspective, we feel that our numbers are feasible. I'll close with this slide. Currently, we have the patent. We have the registered trademark, Trusty Max. We have the domain, TrustyMax.com. We have prototypes in play. We have the S Corporation status, and we are very close to production. We are seeking $150,000 in funding for marketing, manufacturing, web development, and working capital. We, would see, we want to be live by mid-May in order to capture sales from Father's Day. That being said, in order to do that, we need to get moving fairly quickly. Thank you very much for your time. Please let me know if you have any questions. Why ever go into production? Why not just because the other company that is your competitor that you said has a good product are independent, Snap on these people don't have any product like yours. Yeah. Why wouldn't you consider going to these people, selling them the idea, mm -hmm. collecting a bunch of money, keeping the company 100% yours, and then use the royalty to go start manufacturing and never give a percentage of your company, just own 100% of it? So to, to get your question right, why, not, why don't I consider just making it myself? No, giving, give, give it to Snap-on, collect that royalty, use that money to go to manufacturing oh, so and own the company 100%. Oh, so phase two, phase two. Yeah. Yes, so phase two right away? Go, no, go, go reverse, go to phase two first and then go phase one later yeah. if you want to. Phase two, that, that's something that I always think about. That's, that's a plan B in, in, in my mind. I have considered that and it's tempting. I have the... Um, the director of product development, or the, the, the point person of, 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 product, of product development of Snap-on, mm -hmm. her number is on my desk and it stares at me and it taunts me all the time. <laughs> I, I want to call her and Pick I want to- Pick up the phone and call. Maybe I'll <laughs> Here, why don't yeah, you yeah. use this phone? Make a phone call. <laughs> the, the, reason I, I wanna, the reason I'm not doing that is something my gut tells me just to wait a little bit longer. That is a, a, val a valid option and I will see how it plays out. But I'm scared of benchmarking. That's what I I'm, think you have a very good, if you have the product technically, yeah. and, and I'm a mechanical engineer, so I kind of appreciate some of this, if it really is as good as you think it is, those guys will jump on it, as long as you keep the option of you can manufacture it later open, which by the way, they'll pay you a bunch of money to take that option off the table. This will be the best way for you to mark, figure out how good your product is, and there is a market. Something to think about, but okay. a great, great idea. Uh, if it works, it's a brilliant it's a idea. Billion dollar idea. We just gave you. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank you. Thank you. I owe you dinner, <laughs> and and more. And if you decide you don't want to be a billionaire, and you want to go step one to step two, yeah. you've got the best infomercial potential to go direct to consumer. Uh, I mean, you're the next George Foreman. You're the next. You know that <laughs> the, the the goofy ladder thing. Yeah. The, the twelve ladder thing. Yeah. You, you have every every attribute of a terrific direct-to-consumer right. product. Absolutely. Let's go Let's go do that infomercial next week and start selling this thing. I thought about that. I've Don't think about it. Do it. Hey. Stop thinking about it. Do it. I, I, I've actually talked to the guy. No, just, let's just go do it. I want to. I, I want to. He's busy making the phone call. <laughs> do both. Then you scare them. You go up and you say, oh, by the way, Snap-on, here's my infomercial. If you don't take this deal, I'm going out tomorrow and I'm going to kick your rear end across anyway. the street. <laughs> <laughs> then don't, and then don't bother with the NASCAR stuff. Just buy the race yeah, car. Yeah, forget the NASCAR thing. Who cares? <laughs> buy the race car. Put, put your own logo on the race car. After the That's it? And then you're done. Yeah. You can I, borrow I, one of his car in his six garages. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sure. Come I don't on. want to hear anything. I don't want to hear anything. I just want to hear yes, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. All right. Next comment. Can I have your money, please? <laughs> you know, no, we, that, we, the business model for infomercial companies is they take a piece of the action. You invest nothing other than your idea, and you have a patent and all that. How much do you want for this thing again? We want for, our for the whole company. How much do you want for it? Uh, how much do you have? <laughs> I have more than what you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> We think right now that if we if we sold the patent, we could we could get about 1.5 mil for it. So how much are you asking for the tool? 
for the tool, the uh, retail, uh, retail price, mm -hmm. is 1995. I can do it. 1995. Yeah, but wait, there's more. Yeah, 1995. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and if you call, if you call right now in the next five minutes, you'll, yeah. you'll get two set for 1995. I think what you should do is, I got a new career for you. You become the infomercial guy. You sell me the company, and I'll do whatever I want to do with it. How does that sound? <laughs> that 1.5, let's talk after the meeting. Uh, okay, we'll go, we'll go have dinner. Yeah. But here's, here, here's, here's my question to you guys. I mean, we, we could never make, um, we, we've never been able to make an infomercial work for a product that's selling for so little. You can't make them work. Uh, we've looked into it a thousand times. We finally got to the place, we, we spend $100 million a year on, on marketing for eHarmony. And I can tell you that unless you get your LTV, your lifetime value, up a lot, a long ways from what you'd have if you just sold one product, you have a tough time marketing. So we, we get our lifetime value up to $175. If you can get $175 lifetime value, you have a shot. But, but some of these, these uh, weight loss Clinics, you know, their, their lifetime value is $450. They can market on the CBS Evening News because they can pay those rates. We can't pay those rates at $175. You can't even start to pay the rates at $1995 or $15. So I, I actually like this idea. I mean, you, you see, Snap-on Tools or some of these guys are going to have a lifetime value for each of these people that's high enough that they can go out and do the advertising you need to do. What do you think? I'm thinking about that number. It's still taunting me, and you guys are joining in on that. that hurt. You know what I'll do? I'll sell you my idea for $1.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be even. Are we going to do a <laughs> barter transaction? I have, a, I have a prototype if you guys would like to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, heck yes. I also have a sandwich if you guys want. <laughs> That's right. If you buy now, you get a sandwich. So here's the gator grip. Right? I, I broke this one in 15 minutes because I stuck it on the end of my drill. Okay. Here's the crescent tool that is uh, that's, that's not very popular. And here's my tool. You know, I really want one of these guys. <laughs> I hope your first hire is your father. He sounds like a guy who really knows tools, yeah. how to make them, and how to patent them. Did he do all that? He, we hired a patent agent to do the patent. Yeah, but I understand. He came up with the idea. Yeah, he came up with the idea. It is his he patent. He invented it. He's, He's the inventor. his father's first employee, not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> first born, first employee, same you thing. You got it. Yeah. It is the same all thing. All the family. Trust me, same That's thing. right. He's the inventor. That is my passion. It's it my family. It's yes. tied yes. directly to uh, really large cool. size to small size. How many how many sockets does it get rid of for a consumer today? Uh, the the current set of, uh, setup that we have right now it sets up it it replaces 19 different sockets. But we can play with that in manufacturing. We can we could uh, widen up or the yeah depending on what, where we need. Or to Or you be. can go to another socket size and you go to 36 or something. Right? Yeah. What's the torque limit on it? The torque limit. We don't know. It goes high. Well, I, I took it to my mechanic, and he stuck it on his uh, impact. The torque is really high. Yeah. <laughs> it's, he, he, the he, guy. Yeah, yeah, I don't have an answer, really but it's really high. high. <laughs> it's awesome. The torque is awesome. <laughs> the, the, the torque is uh, so high that they can use it on impact, and, and, and it doesn't, nothing happens. It, it, it works fine. They, they use it with the air guns at, at the mechanic's office. Uh, mechanics. Workshop that I got you may not to. want to solve all of it because yeah, you don't. You can have three different sizes. Yeah. So you just came up with three products. Right. Say small, medium, large. Right. You want to hit the big sweet spot. That's it. Right. Right. Which will probably be a little bit smaller than this. Yeah. One. That's what I mean. Probably one size smaller. This is that great, size. man. I, yeah. I love. It. So <laughs> when you are, do you like barbecue? <laughs> we'll have some barbecue. No, I, no, no. I don't. I don't like doing any work. <laughs> this is really cool. Thank you. Very so good. you're seeking how much? One hundred fifty thousand dollars. And what do you get for that? Ten percent equity. One point five million to sell the patent. So we, we valued it at one point five million. Our company. And you, you have a check for testing. <laughs> <laughs> he owes me one point five million dollars. So you better pay me the money before you go. <laughs> the edges of it 
Or can they be cut in such a way so it grips better? Have you done all the gripping testing and all that? Oh, it's like a vice. If you, if you crank down on it, you don't, you don't need... Uh, okay, so you guys have done enough testing yeah. to figure out what the fail-safe and all that method is. If you really have to, you can tighten down on it with a screwdriver, and that thing's not going to go anywhere. By the way, for any other presentations that you make, although it sounds like these guys are going to write you a check before we're, we're done here, bring a demo. I mean, that should be the first thing that you do. Forget PowerPoint. Bring a demo. L let the, let yeah, the panel agree. play. Yeah. Let them bring, you should have brought four of them. Bring, you know, things bolted together and let them play with it. Well, I'm sorry. Well, didn't well there's, let's, 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 let's see. <laughs> <laughs> or go take a table apart. Yeah, let's take this apart right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, you better ask the yeah. dean first. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Yeah. Nice. Please, so, so give me some criticism, please. May I ask you one more time, because maybe I'm dense. What, what do you, what, what's your thought about the fact that you've got such a, an inexpensive product and you have no follow-up product? We do. Oh, you do? We, we do have some ideas. We don't know if they're going to play out. We would like to see that on the end of a Swiss Army knife, like a utility knife. You know, Swiss Army knives have a whole bunch of tools on there, but they don't have a socket wrench on there just yet. Or we could go, we can go the um, Rite Aid route, go and get the CVS and make this into a keychain with a flashlight. There's a whole bunch of applications that we, we can use. It. We, we, there's, there's that, or we can also go big and make it for um, big industrial ships and things like that. So there are also different variations of that that we can do.